that you will sit and listen and enjoy the presentation here this morning. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to be in church today. And thank you for the choir each and every week. They minister to us in song. They, they practice and they work hard to uh, provide good music that's uplifting and honors you. And Father, I pray that you bless uh, both the drama portion and the singing portion today and the message that is to be cast forth. Lord, we want the entire world to know that Jesus saves. And we want everyone here to see that Jesus Christ, God's Son, was given so that we might have life everlasting. And He lives today to give us guidance and direction and to fill us with His Spirit. And Lord, I pray that You'll hush our hearts and our, our mouths and give us, Lord, ears to hear and hearts to receive the message. And we'll thank You for it in Jesus' name and Amen. You may be seated. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end.
We've come now to our last case of the day. If everyone will bear with us a little while longer, we will try to get you home for the holiday just as soon as possible. All right, Mr. Covey, who do we have next? Uh, Your Honor, next we have a defendant charged with a DUI and fleeing the scene of the accident. Oh. Your Honor, if I could just ask a quick favor. Hello, Sarah. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Your Honor. I thought this was going to be a quick case, but here stands a noble public defender to rid me of that belief. I'm sorry, Your Honor. If you could just grant me a brief extension to speak with my client, we haven't quite had enough time to prepare. Come on, Sarah. This is an open and shut case. Why are you dragging us out? Why are you stalling? This is anything but open and shut, Ryan. Mrs. Novak, I can give you a very brief continuance of an hour or so, but any longer than that, your client will have to spend Christmas back in his cell. It will only take a few minutes, Your Honor. Confer with your client, Mrs. Novak, and we'll see you back here in 45 minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. We're sleeping, shepherds keeping vigil till the morning dew. Saw the glory, heard the story. In case you weren't aware, slouching in the corner and hiding your face from the judge is very suspicious behavior. I can't face him again. Who? Judge Hammond? Do you know him? I can't face him again. Why? Are you worried you can't get a fair trial? We, can ask, him, we can ask for a different judge or ask him to recuse himself. It doesn't matter. I can't help you if you won't work with me. Fine. Look, I don't have a lot of time here. Just tell me what happened. It's like I told you on the phone. I fell asleep at the wheel. S simple as that. I it was an accident. And you weren't under the influence of alcohol? No. I told the cop that and the other attorney. I don't know why you keep asking me that. Probably because of your past DUI. That was almost 20 years ago. So that's what this is really all about? 
finally going to stick it to me. I knew I never should come back here. Come back? You don't live here? No. I left this town as soon as I could, and I haven't been back since. Well, why were you coming back last night? I came back to see my mom. She has cancer. I needed to come back. I'm sorry. It happens. Just to clarify, you were driving to your mother's house at 2 a.m.? Yes. I uh, worked all day and got off late and drove straight through the night to get here. When I got off the exit, it must have started to drift off, and I didn't realize how tired it was. I started nodding off for a second, I suppose. And that's when you struck the parked car and the courthouse sign? What's the point of this? Maybe you should take this a little more seriously. This would make your second DUI. The prosecutor will want to lock you up for 30 days minimum. <sighs> that's ridiculous. I wasn't drinking. I've been sober for two years. Then how do you explain fleeing the scene? I didn't flee the scene. Yes, you did. No, I was cold and tired. I hit my head. I thought if I could just get home, they would report it then. You still left the scene of an accident. All I hit was a parked car. That doesn't matter. Well, it should. I didn't do anything wrong. You got nothing on me. Mr. Friedman, I am your attorney. I am trying to defend you. And you are not making life any easier for either of us by being belligerent. It doesn't matter. He's going to throw the book at me. The judge? Craig, if you have something to tell me, you need to say it. It doesn't matter. It's hopeless. Sorry for the inconvenience, Mr. Covey. No problem, Your Honor. Just hate to see the public defender's office taking advantage of your kindness again. Oh, it's fine. We want to ensure that everyone receives fair representation. Trust me, Your Honor. At this stage in the game, they're always guilty. Otherwise, they wouldn't even be in this situation. That's quite a jaded view of our justice system. I'm just saying, you can't be in my line of work for this long and not know. All these creeps are the same. I need to remind you that you're talking about a human being. Yes, but <laughs> it's basic human nature. Criminals need to be punished or they're going to go right back to their old ways. People don't change. I appreciate your strong sense of justice, Mr. Covey, but you seem to be forgetting the place of mercy, forgiveness, and rehabilitation. And let's not forget to mention that pesky concept of innocent until proven guilty. I think you're changing the subject. No. I'd simply remind you that no one is perfect, and but for the grace of God, any of us could fall into all sorts of evil. All right, Judge. I know that you're a Sunday school teacher, but this ain't a Sunday school lesson. And this isn't a minor indiscretion or a little sin problem. I get that you should forgive mistakes, but not really bad ones, not Mr. when they cause harm. Mr. Covey, we are all sinners. All we like sheep have gone astray. We are all deserving of judgment. Now who's the jaded pessimist? It's an awfully bleak outlook for Christmas Eve. That would be if that was the end of the story, but it's only the beginning. Christmas reminds the sinner that fear and despair can give way to joy.
just remember to be respectful and honest. I can tell you from past experience that you're lucky it's Judge Hammond in today, not Judge Miller. Mrs. Novak, are you and your client ready? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you for your patience. You too, Ryan. Yeah, may we proceed? Yes, we will now hear the case of Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Craig. Your Honor. I told you, it's hopeless. Mr. Mr. Craig Freeman. It's like a ghost from the past. I must alert, alert counsel that I am intimately familiar with this defendant. And due to our past history, I think it necessary that he stand before a different judge. Your Honor, I am aware that there is some history between the two of you. However, my client is desperate to have his case heard. He came here for the holidays to see his mother, who is dying, dying of... Of cancer, yes, I am aware. To wait for another judge would potentially leave my client in custody over these precious few days. Additionally, it would be difficult for him to make bail. He has requested that you please hear his case. And how does the defendant plead to the charges of driving under the influence and fleeing the scene of the accident? He pleads not guilty to the DUI, but guilty to leaving the scene of the accident. And I should add that he would like to waive his right to a trial by jury. And for the record, Your Honor, the state has no objection to waiving a jury trial. Mr. Friedman. Craig, at least look at him. Mr. Friedman, is it true that you want to stand trial before me and waive your right to a jury trial? Yes. Court will take a brief recess. But, but Your Honor. Okay, Craig, spill. What's going on? How in the world do you know Judge Hammond? I caused his son's death. What? I caused his son's death. And you just threw yourself on his mercy? What have you done?
I was a stupid kid. It was my 17th birthday. I went to a party with some friends. Someone showed up with alcohol. Everyone pressured me to drink. It was my birthday after all. You don't have to explain it to me. You're my counselor, right? My advocate. You might as well know who you're advocating for. Craig. I don't know how many drinks I had. It, it didn't seem like that many. Suddenly I left late and it was late and I thought, I don't want mom to be suspicious. So I grabbed my keys and left. Someone tried to stop me, but I thought it was fine. I drove home. I knew I was drunk, but I also knew I could do it. I was fine. I was always fine. I don't even remember how exactly it happened, but I swerved. I didn't see him. <laughs> he was out jogging, practicing for a track meet. I didn't see him. It was an accident. Of course it was. It wasn't my fault. No, what am I saying? Of course it was my fault. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, too. My life ended that night. Craig, I don't begin to assume that I know what you've been through. But didn't you pay a penalty for that mistake? Didn't you serve a sentence? Yes, manslaughter. DUI manslaughter. Isn't that an awful word, manslaughter? I was sentenced to two years and then released for good behavior, probably because of my age. Then you can find solace that justice was served. Who's justice? Jason's still dead. I still killed him. Sure, I was punished, but it didn't take away any of my guilt. It didn't bring him back, did it? I mean, today I couldn't even look the judge in the face, not one time. You have to move on and at least try to live a normal life. When you cause someone else's death, you don't get to live a normal life. I can't move on. It's a debt I can't repay. Have you tried talking to a doctor or counselor or maybe someone at a church? <laughs> Nobody wants me in church. Nobody wants me in heaven. I don't deserve heaven, and you all know it. Uh, I don't think any of us get to decide who deserves heaven. I'm sorry, Your Honor. We're ready. No problem. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I wasn't expecting to hear a discussion on heaven. But with the season and all. I don't understand. I think he means it's Christmas. Precisely, Sarah. You do know that Christmas is the time when Jesus came down to earth to open heaven for all mankind. No. You would know, sir, as our resident Sunday school teacher. Sorry again for taking so long. We're ready to proceed. Very well. Open heaven to man? How would he do that? Born in poverty's embrace, born in rumors called disgrace, born the prince so pure and chaste, hallelujah, born of God, sent to comfort, sent to pray. Sent to wipe our tears away, sent to turn our nights to day, hallelujah, sent of God, hallelujah, Yes. 
Furthermore, my client did not stagger and stumble around, nor did he slink off into the shadows as my esteemed colleague oh, so vividly please. imagined. Just watch the video. In fact, I would assert that my client did not intend to flee the scene at all. He was disoriented, tired, and seeking shelter from the cold, and he was desperate to see his mother as he was under the belief that she could die at any moment. He didn't think he had done anything wrong. My client fell asleep at the wheel, and there is no evidence that he was under the influence of any substance. Your Honor, as I've previously stated, there is plenty of evidence that this is a DUI. Just go back to the video. Just watch the video. You're like a broken record. The skid marks, the lateness of the hour, the extent of the damage, and mind I add, he fled the scene. Your Honor. Why else would he flee the scene? Because he was drunk and he didn't want to get caught. You can't take a breathalyzer if you're nowhere to be found. So convenient. Your Honor, I have so many objections, I don't even know where to start. If you both are quite finished with your theatrical performances, I believe we can bring this case to a close. I've heard from both of you, as well as from the defendant himself, and, I, and we seem to be descending into a cycle of squabbling. I've heard your closings, and I'm ready to rule. Look, whatever happens, we can appeal. No. Fate brought me here. Why resist? Will the defendant, Craig Freeman, please rise? After hearing all the arguments and weighing the facts, viewing the video footage, and hearing your testimony, I find as follows. To the charge of driving under the influence, I find the defendant guilty. Not guilty. What? Craig. And to the charge of fleeing the scene of the accident, I find the defendant guilty. In determining the sentence for this crime, it is noted that the defendant has a criminal record, including a previous DUI manslaughter, of which I am painfully familiar. 
Due to the extent of the damages caused on the courthouse property and the suspicious circumstances of your flight, I sentence you to the maximum fine allowable, $4,000. It's okay, Craig. It's a big win. Surely we can come up with that amount somewhere. Mr. What's Covey. the judge doing? Oh. Mr. Covey, here's the amount that Craig owes, paid in full. If there are any other damages that his insurance will not cover, I will pay for those as well. But, Your Honor. Take it to the clerk and tell her to get the paperwork in order. I would appreciate it. Judge Hammond, wait, you can't do this. Go home, Craig, and be with your mother. You're free. How could you do this? I forgive you, Craig, and it's about time you accept my forgiveness. But much more than that, you need to accept God's forgiveness. I know you've heard this before at church and from your mother, but you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. I tried that once, but how can God really forgive me after all the pain I've caused and the life I've wasted? You of all people know why I can't be saved. You're wrong, Craig. He died for you. He loves you, and only he can truly forgive you, and he's waiting for you. Can it really be true? Oh, uh -huh.
The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I do believe, and I confess that he is my Lord and Savior. Amen, son. There's a new name written down in glory. Thank you, Judge. Thank you for forgiving me. I know this doesn't mean much, but I want you to know that my whole life I felt so guilty for what happened. I've suffered every day since an awful night. You know what I wanted so much more than your suffering? Your redemption. How could you of all people feel that way toward me? Only God. I feel so strange. Like this huge weight of guilt is lifting off. I feel, I finally feel... Justified. Huh? Justified. It means made right or declared righteous. Hmm. I can never be righteous. I know that. No, not with any righteousness of your own. But now that Christ is your Savior, you take his perfect righteousness. We can never earn salvation or wash out our many sins, but by faith in the atoning work of Jesus Christ, we are cleansed. The penalty for our sins is paid. The righteous wrath of God towards our sins is appeased. And God declares that from now and forevermore, we are justified.
do you have a minute? Forgive me for asking, but I don't understand. How could you forgive him so quickly, so easily? It was not quick or easy. <laughs> but that was your perfect chance to avenge your son's death. He didn't even serve his full sentence. I don't understand that kind of forgiveness. I thought you, of all people, you would want justice. Justice, Mr. Covey? Mr. Covey, I love justice. I seek justice. My hope is eternal justice, but not my justice and not yours. I see, Your Honor. You mean God's justice. Exactly. What is justice without mercy, and what is mercy without justice? <laughs> but your son. Yes, my son, my only son, passed away, and I doubt that, I will ever, that pain will ever go away. But today I couldn't stop thinking about another father who lost his only son. And that perfect, perfect, innocent son died for the very men who caused his pain. I'm one of those guilty men, Mr. Covey, and so are you. You ask me how I could forgive so quickly? Simple, really. I can forgive because I am forgiven. I must forgive because I am forgiven. And through forgiveness... And through forgiveness comes freedom, peace, and joy inexpressible. Thank you very much, choir. Let's give them a well-deserved hand, if you would. I, I certainly appreciate all of the work that went into the presentation of A Son is Given. And just for a couple of moments, I would like to just say some things from the Word of God. It's preaching time for just two or three minutes, okay? 
A few scriptures come to mind, especially when we think about the theme of this program today. A son is given. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I read in Sunday school, or at least quoted a passage of scripture, again, that reminds me that God gave his son. In 1 Corinthians 5.21, the scripture says, He who knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, what a blessed thought to think that God so loved the world and that God gave himself to die in our place. You know, sometimes I think we all ask ourselves, what is Christmas? What is Christmas? And I guess if you thought about it for a little bit, you'd say, well, Christmas is trees and decorations. It's crowded malls. It's exchanging gifts and it's family gatherings and it's a turkey dinner or a ham dinner. It's reunion with loved ones. It's traveling across the country. It's holiday from school. And I guess we could say that there are a lot of things what Christmas is. But what really is Christmas? Christmas is simply this. A son is given. A son is given. I'm talking about Jesus Christ is given. In that passage of Scripture that's all so familiar to us in John 3.16, let it be known that He loves you. In fact, He loves all of the world. It's His desire that no one die without Christ. It's His desire that no one die and go to a devil's hell. Jesus Christ so loved the world. He loved that world so much that He gave His Son. And just as we saw dramatized here before us, a, a, a son was taken from an innocent man, man and an innocent family. And yet he was able to find forgiveness in his heart. And that forgiveness can only come through the grace of God. How can God so love the world and forgive us of our sins? And you think about the sins that we commit. They're numerous. And they're dark. And they're stained. And they're ugly. And how is it that God Almighty could forgive all of our sin? It's through His grace and His mercy. It's through His love. You know, grace is often described as God's riches at Christ's expense. It's simply this. God, through Jesus Christ, took our place on the cross. In order for justice to be served, sin must be paid for. Our sin must be paid for. And Jesus Christ paid that sin debt on the cross of Calvary. That's what Christmas is. Christmas is God's Son given. You know, the choir sung the song, Can it be? Can it be that God could love me? Can it be that God could forgive me? Can it be that God could use me? Can it be that God wants to do something in my life? And the answer to that question is, yes, it can be. It can be. But in order for it to be, you must come and receive Jesus Christ, God's Son, as your personal Lord and Savior. Your sin debt has to be paid. My sin debt has to be paid. And thank God it was paid for on the cross of Calvary. But God commendeth His love toward us, the Scripture says in Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth, that means He proved or showed His love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners... Sinners deserving of hell. Sinners deserving to be outcast from the very side of God. Christ died for us. And now His righteousness is available. Imagine that. God's righteousness is available through His Son, Jesus Christ. Some say, well, preacher, I'm going to work my way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. You, you wouldn't know how long you needed to work. Well, I, I'm going to buy my way to heaven. No, you wouldn't even know how much it cost. How could you work? How could you buy? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm uh, I'm to bargain with God. I, I'll promise God. But no, no, you, you, 
you don't have the wherewithal to keep that kind of promise. The only way we can obtain the righteousness of God that will enable us to enter heaven is to receive His righteousness that He secured on the cross of Calvary. I'm thankful. It's been many years now, but I'm thankful that I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Oh, I'm far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You're far from perfect. Hey, I'm undeserving of God's gift, and so are you. But God gave His Son, His love, His grace, His mercy, that we might have forgiveness. What a precious word that is. Forgiven. Forgiven. You remember in your life when you were forgiven for something and how clean you felt? How relieved you felt? Oh, I remember when I received Christ as my Savior. As the brother in the program said, it felt... He said, I felt like, it felt like the weight of the world lifted off my shoulders. That's exactly the way I felt the night I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. Because I was trying. I was trying on my own. I was trying in my, in my mind. I was trying through my, my own personal efforts to, 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 to try to cleanse and clear my conscience and all of that. But I couldn't do it. But when I came to Jesus... He forgave me. And blessed, blessed day that was. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son for us. Have you received Him? Have you trusted Him as your personal Savior? Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment. Just a moment. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving your time and your attention to the program today. But listen, it won't be complete until we understand the message. The message of salvation is for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. And if you've received that message of salvation, if you've accepted God's Son as your personal Savior, oh, glad day, happy day, wonderful day. It was. But there may be someone here this morning that has never accepted Christ. You don't know for sure. If you die, you're going to heaven. But you want to know. You want to know. You want to experience that forgiveness. You want to have that weight of the world lifted off your shoulder too. Well, no, you know, all you've got to do is come to His Son. Accept His righteousness as a free gift. The Bible says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in Him. Acknowledging that you understand you're a sinner and you can't save yourself. And all you can do is come to Him for mercy and receive Him. Let me ask you, how many of you with uplifted hands say, Brother Ballard, I am saved and I'm thankful for it. Would you lift your hand, hold it up. No one looking, but hold it up. Amen. Aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. You may lower your hand. Glad day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Thank you. You may lower your hand. Hey, by chance, is there someone say, Preacher, I couldn't lift my hand, but I'd love to be able to lift my hand. I'd love to know that my sins are forgiven. I'd love to know that my, uh, my home is in heaven. I'd love to know that Jesus lives in my heart. I don't know that, Preacher, but please pray. I'd like to receive God's Son today. Would you lift your hand and just hold it up for a brief moment? Let me see it and pray for you. Just hold it up. God bless you. God bless you. I see little hands. I see hands around the auditorium. Thank you. You may lower your hand. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now, listen, I know we've got people from all walks of life. Thank you. You may lower your hand. We've got young. We've got old. We've got some that are maybe here for the very first time. And listen, I want you to know that salvation is in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ alone. And when you come to Christ, you just come to Him once and for all. You obtain the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness. Forgiveness from the penalty and debt of sin. Now, if you lifted your hand and you'd like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to listen to me very carefully. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us are in need of a Savior. 
There is none righteous, no, not one. The penalty of sin is death and hell. And the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, we must understand what we're being saved from before we can be saved. We're being saved from that penalty of sin, the wages of sin. And as I said earlier in Romans 5.8, God proved or showed His love for you so much that Jesus died. He paid your sin debt. And if you, with a sincere heart, understand that you're a sinner and would like to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll simply ask Him with a sincere heart. Now, if you lifted your hand just a moment ago, and you would sincerely like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, would you call upon Him right now? As I word a prayer, this prayer won't save you, but if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ as you pray and talk to Him, the Bible says that He will save you. Now, I know we've got a lot of different folks that raise their hand, and only God knows your heart, and that's all that's important. If you'd like to pray that prayer this morning and ask Jesus to save you, I want you in your heart to pray something like this. Dear Jesus, be merciful. Be merciful to me, a sinner. I take right now you into my heart. I receive Jesus Christ, your Son, into my heart and life. Forgive me of my sin debt and save my soul. Would you ask Him to save you right now? Would you ask Him to cleanse you from your sin debt and be your Savior? And would you continue on saying, Lord, now that I've received you, I pray, Lord, that you would help me to live for you and honor you with my life. Now, head still bowed and eyes are closed. I tried my very best to give you a simple explanation of the gospel and how that you may receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. How many of you with uplifted hand would say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer and I'm, I'm believing right now, this very moment, and trusting Jesus Christ as my Savior right now in this service. Would you lift your hand again? Let me see who that might be. All right, several hands, several hands across the auditorium, some older, some younger. You may lower your hand. Here in just a moment, I'm going to have Miss Kristen play a verse of invitation. And if you would like to come and profess Christ, if you'd like to come forward uh, during this invitation and say, Preacher, I have put my faith in trust. I prayed with you as you led us, and I am I am acknowledging that. I am letting you know, and I'm letting this church know that I'm putting my faith and trust in Jesus today. I want you in a moment, when we stand and when we have the invitation, I want you to come see me here at the front, shake my hand, and let me give someone, uh, let me give you to someone that can further help you and give you some assurance verses. Would you do that? Let's stand together. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Hey, Christians, listen, we need to understand that if we're saved, we need to live for the Lord. We need to witness for the Lord. We need to serve the Lord. And we also need to be in prayer for these that uh, may have lifted their hand and trusted Christ this very morning. Now, if you want to make that profession of faith, if you want that help, if you want further instruction, I want you to come. If some others could come and help me here at the front, that would be a blessing. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless the invitation. Thank you for the presentation of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the message of salvation. And for those that responded with uplifted hand. And Lord, help us to be delicate and careful in our dealing with these. In Jesus' name, and amen. As the piano begins to play an invitation song, hey, if you lifted your hand and you said, I have received Christ as my Savior this very morning, then I want you to come and shake my hand and let me get someone to help you and to pray with you and to further explain to you things of the Lord. Would you come?
Would you come? Would you come? Or maybe you'd say, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, preacher. I'd like for someone to talk to me about salvation. Well, we encourage you to come. We encourage you to come. And Lord bless you. If I could have one of the youth workers or bus captains or workers just uh, take a moment and, and uh, pray. I appreciate a young man coming and saying, I, I, I did what you said there, preacher. Did you? You say, well, I, 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 can, I, I can just remain where I'm at. Hey, the Bible says, For whosoever, shall, whosoever believeth on the Lord shall not be ashamed. The reason I ask you to come forward because it's a revelation of the sincerity of your heart. I'm not interested in anything other than making sure that your decision for Christ is genuine, that it's sincere. I don't want you to be misled. I don't want you to, you know, to, 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 to go through some perceived ritual. No, that's not what it's about. Salvation is coming to Jesus Christ. It's understanding you're a sinner and you need to be saved. You were guilty, and you need to be made innocent in the sight of God, and the only way that can happen is through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. A son is given. A son is given. Jesus was given so that we might be saved. Do you need to come? Maybe you have a question about it. Maybe we can help you with that. We can help you. Young or old, it makes no difference. If you lifted your hand, you called upon the Lord, don't be ashamed of Him. Acknowledge that you're saved today. And Christian, man, live for the Lord. What is Christmas? Christmas is, it's God's Son given to the world. That's what Christmas is. Let's not mistake that. Oh, enjoy the, enjoy the family and enjoy the tree and the lights and the gifts and all that comes along with it. That's fine. That's fine. But let's not forget the real meaning of Christmas is God's Son sent down from heaven. Sent so that we might have the opportunity to go to heaven because He took our place on the cross of Calvary. Just another moment. I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but thank God He washed it white as snow. All right. Can you cry, can you uh, hit that chord? Uh, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We'll sing that together while you're standing, then we'll let you be seated. Isn't it a blessing? Sing it. A joy. Thank you. You may be seated. I think I have our ushers ready. Uh, we re usually receive our offering in the uh, very beginning of service. We want to make sure that we give our folks opportunity to give their tithes for the week. And so we'll have an offering and then we will give some acknowledgments and then let you go. What a blessing it is. Thank you so much for being here. Please continue to be in prayer for the service and for decisions to be made. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the great program and the presentation of the gospel. We pray you bless the offering and uh, use it to the furtherment of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name, and amen.
All right. Thank you again, Miss Kristen. And I do want to thank the choir for a fabulous job, our musicians, our lighting, our sound. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. They work so hard in preparations. Our, uh, our team of uh, our, our drama team, they're kind of scattered a about, but they may can hear you as well as you give a round of applause to them for working to present the gospel. There we go. Thank you so much. And uh, excellent job, excellent job. They worked hard. They're being praying. I don't know if you saw it tonight, not, but Brother Curtis was just overcome with uh, emotion as uh, he was making a presentation to the last statement concerning the love of the Lord. And if you'd, if you'd have seen Brother Cur Curtis some years ago, he wasn't in church. But now he's in church, he's serving the Lord, he's faithful, he's a big part of this ministry here, and that's all because of the grace of God and His mercy. And what a blessing, and I just appreciate that. And then a good hand for Brother Brian Warkenden, who leads our music and takes care of everything here for us. I do appreciate you, Brother Brian. And I enjoy sharing the platform with uh, the choir and the musicians every week, and it's just really, really a blessing. Amen. Well, let's stand together one last time, and I uh, want to thank you again for coming. Now, we'll be doing this again this evening at 5 o'clock. If you have some uh, friends you'd like to, uh, you know, hear the gospel or be, you know, hear, see the program again, we'd love for you to uh, be a part of that, get the word out. And uh, those of you that are visiting, thank you for coming today. Hey, young guys and gals, you did a good job today. Let's give them a hand. I'm telling you, <laughs> praise the Lord. Man, hey, you guys, you guys did better than I would have done if I was eight or nine years old. I got a feeling. So I appreciate that. That is a real, real blessing. Well, let's be dismissed in prayer. Brother Brian, won't you come and uh, dismiss us in prayer? I appreciate this fine brother and his work. Please let him know, just as you've seen, just how much you appreciate all that uh, they offer to our services week after week. Brother Brian. Let's pray. Lord, I do thank you for helping us, Lord, with the, with the program. Lord, we, our prayer has been, Lord, that souls would be saved. And I thank you that uh, that happened as well this morning. Just thank you. Give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it. And uh, Bless us, keep us safe as we go our separate ways. Bring us back tonight at 5 o'clock, I pray in your name. Amen.